Hi, welcome back to my channel. As you guys all know, I'm Nikki Starkiller, and today we're going to talk about the fact that I work at Amazon and have amazing insurance, but I'm going to explain them to some people who've been leaving comments and asking me about transgender services. So, before we even start, I'm not a medical doctor. Okay? But, when you're working at Amazon, we have a we, we have a choice between a couple different medical insurance. Now, this is as far as I know uh, down here in South Carolina. It could change from state to state and maybe some other factors. But as far as I know, this is how I've been able to do my surgeries. So, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Premier, covers transgender benefits. Um, so first off, if you're thinking about getting any transgender benefits, you have to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria. You must be on hormones for over a year, and I suggest that you see a therapist and or psychologist or psychiatrist. Um, so, first things first, you have a doctor, primary care doctor, who also has your hormones. Who also does your hormones or you have a different doctor who does your hormones make sure that they're in network pretty sure they are because a lot of them cover blue cross blue shield um and by the way you can call these guys anytime and within five minutes you're talking to somebody on the phone so you just have to answer a couple of questions and stuff but it's fairly simple very easy to get a hold of them um so, first things first is find a therapist, if you don't have one. Um, find a psychologist or a psychiatrist. So, having a therapist uh, or a counselor helps out tremendously. Not only does it help out with our mental health, you know, because, you know, we do go through some stuff. Um, so, that's covered. So, your hormones are covered. And then your counselor and or therapist are covered. Next, find a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Because if you plan on getting gender reassignment surgery, either way, um, you need a letter from them. So, find one of them. And if you can't find one, and you're planning on getting gender reassignment surgery, you at least need to get an evaluation. So, I don't have a psychologist, but I got an evaluation from a psychologist. So, that's essentially what you need. Um, and then as far as like your hormone doctor, they're covered. Now, first thing I got was breast augmentation. Yes, it is a cosmetic surgery, but it's medically necessary for my transition and that's what the doctors need to know um most doctors are uh, generally already know about this kind of stuff and how it works um and another way you can find like a, a doctor near you is also calling the health plan and see who's in in um in network and that's what i ended up doing so the how i found my uh breast doctor was i called them and I called around to different places and they were like, no, you need to talk to this guy. No, you need to talk to this guy. And three people recommended me to this guy. So I finally got a hold of them, made a consultation, went in there, and bam. Um, he's like, what do you need for paperwork? I said, I guess I, uh, with that, I just needed a letter from my medical doctor saying that I've been on hormones for over a year. And... Uh, letter from my therapist or counselor um, didn't need anything from psychologist or psychiatrist um, so that's how that went um, I had my consultation in November took me a couple months to get into getting the paperwork so once I got the paperwork within two weeks I was scheduled and I had my surgery in February. So, went kind of, first one 
It was probably my longest wait for a surgery. My second surgery was abdominal liposuction. Um, now, see, my surgeon, he's the same surgeon who did my breast. He was just like, nobody's ever been covered for liposuction. I said, well, they cover it. Are you sure he goes? Yeah, I said, so let's call them. So I called him. Within five minutes, I was on the line with somebody. I was like, hi, this is my surgeon. And miss on the other line, you guys are allowed to share information. I'll give you guys authorization. He said, what do I need to write down in with, with her paperwork? And she told him what he needed to do and say that it's medically necessary for a transition. Three days later, I got a call from the surgeon scheduler to schedule me. She's like, we can do you this Friday. I was like, no, too soon. Um, plus, like, working at Amazon, um, we had Prime Day, which is kind of big. So I wanted the extra overtime, and I waited until after that. So then I went in and got my abdominal liposuction covered again. Um, then finally, I got... A consultation with the transgender doctor who's now in the same facility same building same office as the guy who did my boots and my chest or my um, my abdominal liposuction so when I got with her she needed she just needed the letters and then she provided those letters to the insurance company but she needed the letters so I got my feminine facial surgery She's like, I need this letter, okay, gave it to her, and I need this letter, okay, gave it to her. Not even a month after the consultation, I was already in the surgery room, so that was in October. So, the first one, the breast augmentation took a little while to, to get, because once you get the paperwork and once you have a rapport with your insurance company, they generally know what's going on, so... They have all this paperwork. Paperwork generally lasts six months. So <clears throat> that's probably why like my breasts and the um the abdominal lipo were basically already uh shown. You know, the documents, they already had the documents, that's probably why it went by back. And that's probably why they got back to me so soon and they were approved that soon. So there's that. Um, and now I'm planning to get gender reassignment surgery, SRS, bottom surgery, um, in which, you know, I basically already have letters or, and or will have the letters, because I'm still going into therapy and I still see my psychologist once in a blue moon. <laughs> so... You know, and he'll he'll evaluate me again, and we'll just go from there. So, uh, so that's essentially like how like the surgeries work. Now, I know to get like your foot into the door, you know, people are seeing like some of these are benefits are a little um, hard to get into being well documented with gender dysphoria. You have to be 18 and older and capable of making informed decisions about considering the treatment. And you have to have letters. Letters, paperwork is the most important thing about the benefits. But the benefits, so let's say that I made $15 an hour times 40 is $600 a week, right? 600 times 52. Is thirty one thousand two hundred dollars, um, but I got one hundred ten thousand dollars in surgery, so for essentially nothing. So I made a hundred. I had a hundred, hundred grand, like basically like thrown at me. So did I make one hundred forty one thousand dollars? You know the benefits far outweigh the, the pay. You know, especially since your doctor's being covered, your doctor visits, blood work, you know, which I suggest. Um, your hormones, your all your prescriptions, 
your prescriptions if you see a psychiatrist. You know, because they're the ones who offer, like, prescriptions. Psychologists don't. Therapy and counselors don't. So, all these prescriptions are essentially covered. Um, so, if you think about, like, and then even your therapy, your counselor, your psychologist or psychiatrist are covered. So, I have a thousand dollar deductible and a two thousand dollar out of pocket. I'm at my two thousand dollar out of pocket in 29 days. Why? Because I had doctor's visits, I had third, you know, and I, I paid all that. But that just means that once my out of pocket's reached, there's a minimum that I have to pay for, for these surgeries that there's certain things that they don't cover. And what they didn't cover was part of the anesthesiologist bill, and that's why I had to pay essentially a little over $50 for all three surgeries because you know, there's there's little things that they just don't cover. But once you reach your out of pocket, it's basically it's covered. So yeah, you make thirty one thousand dollars a year. You're able to live. You know, you it's a it's it's a livable wage down here, you know. Somewhere else, maybe not. But down here in South Carolina it's a livable wage. And I don't have to pay any money, really, for my in health benefits. You know, um, I pay a little less than ten dollars a week. Comes out of my paycheck. So what's ten dollars? Five hundred twenty dollars a year that I pay for health insurance. That's a doctor's visit. Yeah. That's a doctor's visit with them taking your blood. You know, so... Yeah, I'm able to see my doctor whenever I want. Uh, essentially. Um, I'm now getting blood tests every month until my surgery. Because I just want to make sure my hormones will be in check. And I just want to make sure they, everything's like well documented. And that's all covered. So, yeah, that's essentially the Amazon benefit. And it's like, there's a lot of other things too, like dental eyeglasses and stuff like that. Overall, the benefits far outweigh, like, the pay, you know, tremendously, you know. Especially as a transgender person. And then you still have money. And you, then you don't have to worry about paying for your doctors and stuff like that. Just kind of save like some money. So that way when you've been there for over a year and your health insurance renews. You have that money to reach your deductible and reach your out of pocket. And then your surgeries are covered. So my surgery for bottom surgery is going to be in June. Uh, health benefits roll over April 1st. So April, May, June. I have three months, essentially, to reach my out-of-pocket. It'll be easy. Because I'll see my counselor once a week. I'll probably see my psychologist within that time frame. I'll probably have a doctor's appointment, still getting blood. So, getting my prescriptions, you know. So, but I'll end up saving some money for that, so that way I can just be like, bam, here's, here's the money for it, you know. Because I know it's going to be coming up. So, I mean, if, if y'all have any more questions about, like, transgender stuff, uh, benefits, like, working on Amazon, ask away, you know. Um, send me more, some more DMs, write some comments, you know. Like I said, the benefits far outweigh the, outweigh the pay at Amazon for a transgender person. And yeah, you work for it, but at the end of the day, like, 
you don't have to come up with like a hundred grand just to get one surgery. You know what I mean? Out of pocket. It's a lot of money saved. And I'm thankful that I'm able to get these kind of benefits. You know, because as transgenders, we generally get shit on by society. You know, which is which is crazy. But Amazon, great place to work. Um, also about Amazon with like being transgender, there's no discrimination in. There's a zero tolerance for making fun of other people, whether it's their gender, their race, their sex. The LGBT community is very huge in Amazon. And they actually have their own affinity group called Glamazon. They take care of us, you know? And like I said, the benefits, benefits are amazing. So hopefully this has been able to answer some of your guys' questions. Um, like I said, and if not, reach out to me. I'll answer you guys some more questions and stuff like that. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching my video. As you guys all know, I'm Nikki Starkiller. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and OnlyFans soon. And as always...